Hey guys and welcome to this video. This is an update of this uh, Kang Teo project. This is a Nerf blaster um, and the aesthetics of this blaster is from the Kang Teo from the upcoming video game Cyberpunk 2077. So this video I'm going to tell you about the electronics, explain how every single little bit works. Um, first demonstration, so battery is already plugged in, safety is now off. Uh, wait a few seconds for the ESCs to arm. And by default, I, you can you can set the motors to not spin, but I set it to spinning at a at the lowest speed, which is like an idle speed, and that helps with uh, rev up time. It revs up faster uh, this way. So the rev switch is over here, little secondary trigger. And the primary trigger, which doesn't do anything at the moment because you have to press and hold that while also pressing this and then it will trigger the solenoid and the muzzle flash LED. So I'll do that now. And safety back on. And sometimes it does that little rev at the end there which is a, a cool little feature. Not every time, but sometimes. So if you go to the description of this video down below, you'll see a link to my build log and it's on Nerf Haven or Reddit and maybe the Arduino forums as well. And uh, follow the links there and there you'll find a system schematic of all the electronics on here because these following the wiring in this video is, you just can't follow it because these wires are just a little bit messy here but look at the system schematic and everything will just make sense etc RC planes etc uh, this one's a 1.3 amp hour or 1300 milliamp hour uh, and it's 25c discharge rate and it's a 3s lipo with 12 around 12.6 volts at maximum charge uh, make sure when you get some a lipo battery that you get at least 1300 milliamp hour maybe 1500 milliamp hour is what I uh, recommend to calculate now you got to make sure this battery handles the current draw of all the loads on this entire thing because this one battery powers everything see and they assume it's 25 amp discharge rate that is not necessarily the case um, and then they wonder why their lipos with 40 C discharge rate and with a 40 with a 30 amp load and their 40 C discharge rate tiny little battery puffs up and smokes up or whatever and they wonder what the hell is going on well, the proper way to calculate it is to multiply the discharge rate, in this case 25C, by the capacity. So in this case, uh, and that capacity has to be in amp hours. So 1300 milliamp hours is 1.3 amp hours. So 25 multiplied by 1.3 is around 32 amps. So this can discharge 32 amps uh, safely enough. And the load of this entire thing, I measured it with an ammeter and it's pulling around 20-25 amps, so this battery is fine. There's just a balance connector, every LiPo has this, uh, just ignore that. Um, I mean, use that to balance it when you charge it, but it's not used in this build. It's not connected to anything, just let it float around. Uh, this here is an XT60 connector. Um, you can probably get away to XT30 if you draw less than 30 amps. XT30 is even smaller, but we suck. So sort of stuff. Moving further down the line now, we have the two ESCs. These electronic speed controllers control the motors, the speed of the motors, and they also allow the power from the battery to go straight to the motors. You do not want to power motors directly from the Arduino. The little Arduino down here, I'll get to that later. Uh, but these ESCs are rated at 40 amps each, uh, which is a bit overkill because these motors only draw around 10 amps at most in this setup, I believe, maybe around, I mean usually around 7, 8 amps, because I only have these motors spinning at 50% speed. Um, maybe in a future video I'll crank it up to 100% just for funsies. Um, but at 50%, uh, 40, 50% uh, RPM, these motors are more than enough for this. So when you get ESCs, make sure they are able to carry the current of the motor. So you need one ESC per motor, otherwise the back EMF from the two motors going to one ESC will confuse the timing in the ESC and it could damage the ESC so you need one ESC per motor um, unless the ESC was specifically designed to have two motors connected to the one ESC but generally one ESC per motor 
Um, ESC should carry enough current for the motor, so it should have higher current rating the motors. You can probably get a 20 amp ESC for these motors, that should be fine. And make sure these ESCs can handle the 12.6 volts 3S LiPo battery voltage, um, so you don't burn that out either. There are four radio control planes. Is you have to have a brushless motor with a brushless ESC. You cannot run a brushed ESC with a brushless motor, or vice versa. They have to be brushless and brushless. These ES, uh, these motors are outrunner motors. So you got inrunner motors, which are these long cylindrical shaped motors. They're the common motors, but these ones in particular for propellers on planes and possibly drones um, and these are outrunner motors so if you look carefully you can see the flywheel the silver bit uh, the, the shaft the green tip here where my finger is and the other green bits inside there which is the the outside can of the motor and all of those things spin together because that's an outrunner motor so the can the outside of the can or most of the outside of the can spins with the shaft an inrunner motor designed differently so that only the shaft spins. Now you want an outrunner motor because it's a lot easier to 3D print your own flywheels um, over the top of the motor and also with inrunner motors their long cans look ugly on an earth blaster if you have these big cylinders sticking out the other side. Some outrunner motors have front mounting, you want rear mounting screws so that way uh, the flywheel doesn't get in the way. Well, these ones are draw about 7-8 amps at around 50% load, or 50% RPM, I mean. And these are coming from 12.6 12 volts. So 12.6 multiplied by 8 amps is around 80 watts, or 7 amps, around 80 watts of power. So get motors that are around 60 to 80 watts at least of power, and that should be, uh, that should be enough. Uh, but these can... These can draw more current when I increase the RPM, therefore increasing the amount of power and then increasing the speed of these motors will increase the velocity of the dart. See it, but it goes behind here, behind, 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 and it comes out here. And it goes down into the Arduino, but before the power goes into the Arduino, it goes through this safety switch. Now, a safety switch is basically an on-off slider switch. Uh, that cuts the power to the positive side of the Arduino or the VIN, the VIN input, the voltage input. Um, and between the off switch, safety switch, and the Arduino VIN, uh, there is a diode. So the diode there is pointing towards the Arduino. I can't remember if it's the cathode or anode or whatever, but the stripy end of the diode points towards the Arduino, and that helps. Uh, that's, that's a protection device, and that helps. Uh, reverse voltage, um, which and my, my previous Arduino has kept dying um, almost straight away. Some oh, another one took a few months, but uh, this stuff seems to fix it. So protection diode for reverse to prevent reverse voltage. Again, refer to my system schematic to see how to wire things up. Do not refer to this video for the wiring part. Um, this is just an explanation. The, you can also see that in the schematic I drew up. That's a one. No, that's a 33 microfarads. I recommend a 100 microfarad capacitor here. Um, I just had a 33 microfarads because that's all I had on hand. But uh, this is polarity sensitive, so refer to the schematic and make sure you wire it up the right way. Otherwise, it'll probably explode or go bang or whatever when you don't wire it up the right way. Negative side, uh, voltage sag. So when you Power, when, when the solenoid and other heavy loads like the motors and the solenoid turn on initially they might draw like a bit of voltage away from the Arduino and it causes voltage, a drop in the voltage um, it also helps with voltage spikes as well if that ever happens um, so that capacitor helps protect the Arduino so does the other capacitor and that diode so I, you should definitely put those in refer to the schematic link in the description okay, so this is Arduino this is a third party Arduino, I killed a couple of genuine Ardu Arduinos, uh, but this is a Arduino Nano, you can use any Arduino you want, the only reason why I use the Nano is because it's small and compact and can fit inside this um, Nerf Blaster, and on the bottom here you can see there's a USB port, uh, that just so I can plug in my USB cable from my laptop so I can upload code without having to open up the entire blaster and take all the screws out, I can just plug it straight in the bottom here. Let's skip straight to the solenoid. So this solenoid here, this is a standard 12 volt solenoid with a 35 millimeter stroke length. Any less, and it won't, it won't push the dart far enough to get into the flywheels. Uh, so make sure you get 35 millimeter um, stroke length, which is you know the 
how far it travels from original point to the stroke length. 35 millimeters is what you want. Uh, this is a 12 volt solenoid, uh, so that's why I have a 12 volt battery and powered 12 volt solenoid. Uh, less volts, like a 2S LiPo, will not give this thing enough power to push the data. It'll just get, it'll just sort of get stuck. I already tried it, so this thing needs 12 volts at least, uh, probably at most as well. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to overvolt this a little bit in the future. Um, I'll see how that goes. This spring here is upgraded. I had an issue before with the standard spring that came with it. Um, where when it comes back, when it returns back to its original position, this the spring that you was on here when I with the came with the solenoid was too weak, and it would get the shaft over here would get stuck on the dart. There was too much friction, and um, it it wouldn't go fully back anymore. So what I did was I put a spring on here, a more powerful, um, I mean stiffer spring I should say, and that helps push it back uh, a lot better. But if you put it too stiff. Um, the 12 volts won't be enough to push it forwards again. So the, the sweet spot for me was 0.9 millimeter diameter spring. And when I say 0.9 millimeter, I mean the actual, like the the steel itself is 0.9 millimeter diameter. Um, now the overall diameter I think is around 14 millimeters. I think that was outside diameter, um, and the length was around 40 millimeters, I believe. Um, so get a replacement spring, same as a standard spring, except it's 0.9 millimeters for each of these for the actual metal, and that makes it stiffer. Otherwise, it won't work. Now here there is behind the micro switch, um, underneath, can't really see it. But there's a flyback diode or a freewheeling diode, and that diode's the same as the diode over here, but it's another one, and it's just a generic diode, 14N001 or something along those lines. Um, and that has the, refer to the system schematic again to see how that's wired up. That goes between the two leads of the solenoid. The solenoid is an inductor, so when the electromagnetic field gets turned off, it collapses and it pushes a reverse voltage or current or something through back through the circuit and back to the MOSFET. MOSFET's this thing over here. And that could kill the MOSFET or possibly damage the Arduino, possibly, but it'll damage your MOSFET at least. So the diode helps protect underneath there, the diode helps to protect the uh, MOSFET from the solenoid. So moving down to the MOSFET, what is a MOSFET? This MOSFET is a N-channel MOSFET, so that means it switches, it basically, what a MOSFET does is it basically switches on and off a power in this case, they can do other things I'm sure, but in this, in this case, um, this MOSFET just switches on and off the power to the solenoid, um, and the Arduino controls a MOSFET. So the Arduino tells a MOSFET when to turn on and off and how long to do that, to do so. If you connect the solenoid directly to the Arduino, you will fry it. Um, so don't do that, obviously. So now the power is being diverted through the MOSFET to the, to the solenoid, and it, the power does not go, get drawn through the uh, Arduino, of course. The MOSFET is rated at 30 amps, which and the Solenoid is only draws like 7 to 8 amps, that's definitely uh, fine. It's also rated at 60, 60 volts, there's only 12.6 volts going through the solenoid and only 5 volts going from the um, Arduino to the gate of the MOSFET. Now the MOSFET, besides being N-channel, there's also P-channel, but P-channel is a bit, um, a bit more complicated to switch to wire up in this case, in my opinion. So get an N-channel MOSFET, um, and also make sure it is logic level, because logic level MOSFETs, they can they can turn on and off fully at low voltage, uh, low gate voltage. So Arduino only outputs five volts through the signal to the gate of the MOSFET, and that five volts is all that's needed for a logic level MOSFET to fully turn on and off. Uh, so make sure you get a MOSFET that's N-channel and logic level. Oh yes, micro switches. So these micro switches, so this one here down here is the secondary micro switch. This one here is the primary micro switch. So you get a little trigger, 3D printed trigger, 3D printed pretty much everything. Um, so you pull the trigger back and it hits the micro switch. Now the micro switch has got its own spring in there, so you don't need a spring for this trigger because it uses a spring inside the micro switch. I like the short actu uh, actuation uh, length of like three millimeters or whatever it is. It sort of increases response time, I guess. 
um, so I think that's kind of cool. These micro switches are basically wired exactly like push buttons to the Arduino and they're both separately wired to just as push buttons and they've, they've got pull up resistors over here. I refer to the system schematic again, you can look in a bunch of online tutorials for Arduinos and how to wire up a pull up or pull down uh, push button to an Arduino. And the way these micro switches know what each other, what, what they should do is uh, purely through the code on the Arduino. So the code tells the buttons what, what, to act, what the buttons activate and blah blah blah. Also important to note is that a lot of uh, Nerf Blaster uh, upgrades the micro switches they upgrade the micro switches to high current um, you know 5 amp 10 amp 20 amp whatever micro switches um, but in this build you definitely do not need to do that uh, these are this is just a 1 amp micro switch this here is like a 3 amp micro switch you can use low amp low current micro switches because the current going through the solenoid and the motors do not go through the micro switches whatsoever on this in this case they just simply are little push buttons to tell the Arduino what to receive as an input signal. You can just get any low current micro switches. Um, I recommend a large micro switch here uh, without the metal bit uh, so that way you can 3D print your own trigger and use the internal spring and it works great. One last thing is the optional LED. This is just to create like muzzle flash which is a cool little effect. Uh, and in a dark room you can see it flashing and stuff. So I chose an orange color, um, and there's two of them, one on each side, they're wired in series. Again, refer to the system schematic, see how that's wired. Uh, it's got a 150 ohm resistor, and the positive side is connected to the 12 volts, I believe, from the battery. And the ground of the LEDs is connected to the, goes all the way down to the MOSFET, to the same drain pin that the solenoid is connected to. So every time the MOSFET tells the solenoid to fire, it also tells the LEDs to turn on at the same time. So that way the MOSFET and the, I mean the solenoid and the LEDs both turn on and off in sync with each other. So I'll just demonstrate that now. It takes a few seconds to arm the ESCs. So you'll see the uh, LED and the solenoid are in sync. Sometimes it makes that cool little like, revving sound at the end there when you turn it off. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. But So this, this works really well. Uh, and also if you want to see the um, code of the Arduino, uh, that's also in the link below in that build log I made and the multiple build logs I made. So go there, download the code. It's free. Download it, you know, modify it, whatever. Use it. Um, there's an explanation on my build log how to use the code change the numbers in the code and you can change the speed of the motors you can change the fire rate of the uh, solenoid all sorts of cool stuff now if you really want to take this further you can do like select fire modes where you can add another switch and that switch will like change between full auto semi auto single shot fire and you might want to add like a knob or a potentiometer and that'll adjust you can just turn the knob and it'll adjust the speed of the uh, of the flywheels here so this is the fully 3d printed Nerf Blaster, based on the Kang Tao from Cyberpunk 2077. Safety off. Insert mag. Safety on. So that sums up this video. Um, hopefully you learn a few things there. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see future projects. Leave a comment below if you've got any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.